Reporters Roundtable provides viewers with in-depth examination of issues reported on leading media outlets across the world. A lively panel of journalists with comprehensive knowledge in all fields of endeavor, be it politics, health, business, sports, entertainment, information, communication technology, gender, law, international affairs and diplomacy, and a host of others will objectively dissect the matter of contention. On Reporters Roundtable, fairness, objectivity, factuality, and non-partisanship is our hallmark. It's the Double RT Show with Rebecca Ewa. This and every other Thursday from 10 to 12 GMT. Make a date with us. The Reporters Roundtable, all angles, all sides. Great, good to have you again on Reporters Roundtable. My name is Rebecca Ewa. Now, to some people on the African continent, the mere mention of elections sends shivers down their spine because of the enormous destruction electoral related violence brought on their country. Disputed elections have rendered many refugees who have suffered irreparable physical and psychological damage. Some have suggested that going into the December general election, the EC should appoint election security officers or make a request to the police to get experienced staff seconded to it to oversee the design and implementation of a countrywide security plan in coordination with the security agencies. This will then ensure that the political, civil and human rights of the citizenry are protected. In addition to this function could be added coordination of EC security activities at the EC headquarters, the supervision of field security, the provision of all appropriate operational briefings and training for the security agencies, a joint elections operations center at the EC headquarters or any appropriate location in Accra which can be replicated in the regions and districts to serve an equivalent function at the local level, monitor and ensure thorough adherence to the security plan to respond to the wide variety of envisioned security scenarios to which the electoral process may be exposed. It is possible some might be trying to secure their visas to leave the country just in case any unfortunate incident and businesses could repatriate their capitals to other countries to safeguard their investment. During the election petition after the 2012 election, government businesses slowed with many in the private sector relocating their investment, fearing that the outcome of the Supreme Court petition could lead to violence. However, Ghana was unable to raise or Ghana was able to raise the bar so high, chalking up another feat in her democratic development. So should we as a country always go through this cycle of fear and panic anytime the country is heading into general elections? On Reporters Roundtable, we delve deep into these issues. With me to do the discussion is Adib Sani. He is a security analyst. I have in the studio George Sapo. He is the host of Talking Point and also the host of Unique Breakfast Show on Unique FM. And I also have George Ankra, who is a chief editor with Radio Ghana. We'll be speaking to Al Haji Nayakubu Hamza, the commanding officer, formed police unit on the line soon. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <laughs> Right, let me start with you, Adib. When we talk about election security, what is it all about? Um, well, election security is as simple as a condition uh, when you don't feel threatened either psychologically or physically. Um, 
but may I state emphatically that um, according to the Global Peace Index, the world has been less peaceful, as a matter of fact, more violent since 2008. And as of 2014, uh, the global economic toll on violence worldwide amounted to about $10 trillion. That is about 11.3 uh, of the global GDP. But may I also state, uh, without mincing words, that you cannot have a state of positive security. Um, the farthest or the best we can go is negative uh, security, because positive security is, of course, according to a uh, conflict analyst, a uh, utopian. So at least to a large extent, you must have majority of the people feeling safe, uh, able to go to bed with two eyes closed, they should have confidence in the security setup. They should have confidence in the legislations. They should have confidence in the institutions. So in that state, then we can safely say we are secure to a large extent, but not fully. Mm. But um, should there be the need for us to think about election security as far as our elections is concerned? Of course. Yes, I'll, I'll come on to all of you. Okay. Of course. It is imperative. It is only human. It is only natural that we think security because we can draw bitter lessons from uh, countries that have gone through wars. I mean, uh, because of the dynamic nature of violence, because of the changing faces of violence as against uh, the times of our forefathers when empires invaded empires to uh, usurp their powers or to uh, 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 take over their resources. Now, the, uh, the, the nature of conflict has uh, uh, changed because of new actors, because of new issues, because of new weapons, because of new strategies. And we can learn so many lessons from countries like Sierra Leone, Liberia, and even recently in, in, in Ivory Coast, between 2011 and 2012, when uh, President Gbagbo then refused to hand over uh, power to the duly elected leader, Alassane Ouattara. We all know what happened there, uh, uh, the deaths of over 2,000 people, the psychological trauma, uh, the, the rape that occurred, the, the, the ethnic cleansing that took place. And of course, what is even happening in uh, uh, Gabon now? Before we came on there, I had a hearty discussion with my brother, George. Uh, what is happening there, it is so scary. And yesterday on my Facebook page, I, I asked that we pray for Gabon. Uh, because what is happening there has uh, a tendency to degenerate into a wider security implication, not just uh, for Gabon, but the sub-region. So we have, I mean, every reason to be worried about because of the lessons we can draw from other countries, not just the loss of life. We can imagine the loss of property. And you can imagine how much it will take to, as it were, come back to our, our, our original states, when indeed, even if in this state we are finding it difficult to, as it were, be like the Asian tigers. So it is very critical we, we, we look at it closely. Uh, I spoke with my lecturer, Kwesi uh, Japan. he mm. lectured me at Kofi Annan. Uh, peace, uh, International Peace Keeping Training Center. He's also uh, with the School of Governance at Gimpa. He said that uh, violence, or conflict cannot be resolved. Think about it. So I was wondering, uh, what is this man talking about? How come conflicts cannot be resolved? So I even approached him and asked him, how about the, 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 the conflicts in the north, the chief mm. transit, can it be resolved? He said, no. I asked him, how about the conflict in Syria, can it be resolved? No. But upon thinking about it, I have come to realize that indeed conflicts cannot be resolved but can be managed. And the best way to deal with conflict is to prevent it from happening in the first place. Because according to conflict analysis, resolving conflict goes beyond uh, the two or three sides smoking the mm. peace pipe. But it is going into the minds of the people to clean uh, 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 their, their perceptions. Many have been traumatized. Can you reverse that? It is very difficult to reverse. So the best approach is to prevent it from happening in the first place. That is why it is critical to, as it were, all of us play a, 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 an important role in ensuring that we don't slide in the, into violence in the first place. Right. Let me come to George. No, the senior George. <laughs> <laughs> is there a need for Ghana to be concerned uh, about election security? Because... After all, we are a peaceful nation, aren't we? Yeah, Rebecca, <coughs> uh, just like my 
brother Sunny said, for me, security revolves around creation and life itself entails security. Uh, when God created man, he gave us the angels to provide us with security. And so, yes, we do not need to underestimate what could happen in Ghana if we do not take precautionary measures to prevent any conflict. If you observe the level of tension in the country as a result of the electioneering, you will come to the conclusion that because some people feel this is their last term or last chance to you know, struggle for power, it has become a do, a do and die affair to the extent that you find men of God trying to speak out in a particular line and which is also generating a lot of debate. So yes, there's the need for us to look at a way of preventing any violence in anywhere around the electionary uh, uh, period. If you've been monitoring the police tax force and what the operatives have been doing over the period, you realize that they have already identified what they call the flashpoints or the trouble spots based on intelligence reports and they are seriously getting ready to deploy professionals to handle those spots so that when you go to the polls to vote, all you need to do is to go and cast your ballot and leave, go home peacefully so that when it gets to the evening when they are coming to camp, then you can come and observe what is happening. Uh, time and again, the security experts tell us that we should not take anything for granted. Those of us who have the opportunity to speak on radio and say anything at all, mm. thinking that we will just see it and get, get away from it, the caution is still there, very serious. And if you have ever received training before, if you've ever handled a gun before, you are the first person to fear or to think of avoiding opening fire because if you trigger it the end results are terrible and i want to side with sunny when he said conflict cannot be uh, uh, uh cannot be solved, solved but can be managed, can be managed. Yeah. because if i start any duel with you now it is not going to be between you and i mm. it is going to stretch further mm. to our supporters some of whom may not be ready to give up. And in an era of some elements of extremism, in an era of the kind of expectation that people have, when people think that this is their last chance, I believe if you've observed even school elections or union elections and you campaign after the campaign, you don't even involve money, but here money is going down the drain, and there are loans mm, which you are supposed to pay back. Come to think of it, even at the school level, the kind of tension, the kind of fear, that kind of feeling that surrounds you when they are coming to announce the results, and you realize that hey, the marks are flowing, and some other person is speaking more than you, as if your heart will, will come out. Exactly. It's Nobody it's enjoys it's this. It's you see that thing. Let, let me take the thought of George. I can see yeah. you are gathering your tension right at your fingertips and your, <laughs> your feet. You know, when when when, when I did mention that conflicts cannot be resolved but uh, managed, I, I wonder whether Liberia they are still managing their conflict or they're resolved. Yes, yeah. Rwanda, Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. these conflicts have been managed to to resolve. If I put it that way, at least we have a clear example as as Rwanda. You know, they've been able to come out of that difficulty, and now they are one example for most African countries to look at. Ideally, we need not worry, we need not think when we are going for an election. We need not have any fears at all. Uh, unfortunately, we find ourselves in a continent where what we think about only is, is power. It's, it's how you can become the leader, how you can become the president, how you can become the member of parliament. And you want to employ, employ 
every means for you to get to that stage. So when such things begin to happen and begin to come up, then you realize that no, uh, security is it's, 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 it's one way or the other compromise. And that's how come that most of the time for us in this part of the world, especially here in Africa and Ghana, whenever we are going for elections, it's it's a matter of fear. It's a matter of, uh, are we sure that this is going to be okay? Are we sure we're going to come out peacefully and all that? But ideally, that should not be the situation. If we as a people and if politicians would change their mindset about elections and electing a leader, then violence will be something that we cannot even think about when we are going for elections. Look at Gabon. I believe talked about Gabon. I mean, 99%, 99.9% turnout in, in, in a stronghold of the ruling party. I mean, it's, it's very difficult for you to understand things like that. It's just because someone wants to hold on to power. Of course, somebody has also got another chance that this is my final opportunity to become the president of a nation. Someone also thinks that, no, I can't also leave power just like that. Mm. I have to hold on to it. And that's where we have problems. But if we can just go back to the ideal situation of elections and having it in my mindset that it's all about getting people to manage the affairs of the country. If you think you have not done well, then people will judge that. When they vote, you will clearly move out. If you think that you have done good and they vote for you to come in... Okay.